Now, for better or for worse, we're certainly in that time frame of the year where COD fans are like, okay, what's next? Whether for genuine excitement for what's upcoming or to escape the current situation. Whatever the case, it's just something we see every single year. With Modern Warfare 3 being rumored to be upcoming here, we know that it's about a 50-50 toss-up to see if we'll see any fundamental deviation from what we see with this year in terms of like game mechanics and features and whatever Sledgehammer may be cooking up. But 2024, a little bit further out, that's a different story where we've got recently, as surprising as it sounds, more information about what that will hold. Perhaps some good information too, depending on how you look at it, despite it, again, being a bit further out on the timetable. Today, we're running down what you need to know so that you're in the loop with all this new recent information. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to what Treyarch has on deck next, the rumored setting of it and all? What are the case? Drop your thoughts. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay with all things Call of Duty, whether that be Modern Warfare 2, 3, COD 2024 content, and other FPS projects like X Defiant and more. I'd love to have in the community if you're interested in staying up to date with all of that. And finally, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel for 30% off certain items like hype sauce tubs and starter kits for the month of June, but more on them in a bit. For now, let's jump into it. So Treyarch's next project is tentatively slated for like Q4 2024, assuming that all things work according to the current rumors. And for better or for worse, high expectations are already starting around the project as from the start, a shift to 2024 rather than 2023 was made to give Treyarch more time to work on their project, something that's much needed for the studio given their hand in just about every project in recent years. I mean, Modern Warfare 2, they developed the ranked modes. 2023, it's rumored they'll have a hand in a small subset, including zombies. Vanguard, they handled zombies. Cold War, they are brought in to completely tie up the project, with Sledgehammer being removed from the previously co-led project from Sledgehammer and Raven. Still to this day, I kind of think it's why we didn't see the return of some classic castings from Mason and Woods. Yes, we saw their characters, but it wasn't the same actors that we saw, since I'd wager the campaign was always meant to be a Cold War game, but not a Black Ops game, but that's a different discussion for a different day. The last game that Treyarch didn't have a hand in was Modern Warfare 2019, but that's still right off the heels of their work with Black Ops 4. So they really just went right from Black Ops 4 to Black Ops Cold War. So they've had a busy last five to seven years following Black Ops 3 and when they had that sort of last window for development and what was on deck, though even that was something that had developmental turmoil where they ended up having to remove the campaign and all that kind of stuff to make way for Blackout because it just wasn't up to par. But anyways, minus the small teams being utilized elsewhere for things like ranked play and zombies, a sizing disparity that's nothing compared to the mainline developmental efforts, to have another year of development almost brings this game to the level of they have a full developmental window like Modern Warfare 2 had. Now, that's to say that Treyarch also isn't as stubborn in the sense of let's change things up in the fundamental capacity that no one really asked for like Infinity Ward has done with both Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2. But again, different story for a different day. Now, what's been reported so far, however, is that the project will be focused around the Gulf War, with many pinning it to be Black Ops Gulf War or Black Ops Cold War 2. Both could be plausible, though. The final cutscene that we get for the Cold War era was Adler, Hudson, Mason, and Woods descending on an old World War II bunker, finding Butcher before heading to Caldera. But, I mean, that was in 1984 in the cutscene, so still a few years ahead of the Gulf War era. So we'll see what the naming ends up being. But that said, this info is backed up pretty heavily that we'd see something in the Gulf War era by the Warzone Mobile Alpha way back in early July of 2022, almost a year ago to the day actually, where because everything was developed for the same engine, a unified experience, we learned pretty early on about a ton of what was upcoming from Modern Warfare 2, the Warzone Mobile experience and how Verdansk was returning, and even COD 2024 with concept art and loading screens leaking out from all of that, as well as like weapons lists and things like that, showcasing a hangar under fire with an F-117 Nighthawk stealth bomber in view, as well as a broken and open Saddam Hussein's palace, all of this with a mixture of code names from Mogadishu, so the setting seems to be pretty well cemented if all of this stuff holds up. Now, whether or not we do some time jumping or not in the campaign to a near future setting, that's been rumored for a while, but also nothing really new has come out to corroborate that, so we don't quite know if that's going to be the case for 2024. But a recent air quote leak, if you can call it that, comes from leaker Ralph's Valve, who had an incredible track record before, but has kind of had some setbacks here in regards to that spotless track record recently. Recently, he tweeted a little fan-made teaser hinting at this era for the Gulf War, which re-sparked discussion about 2024 further. Beyond that, still really little is known, and that's to be expected. I mean, we're still over four months out from the rumored release of this upcoming year's project, and then a year beyond that. So this is kind of all we have at the moment, and it's still, for the most part, a lot by comparison to what we see a year and a half out from a project's launch. But one thing that was up for discussion here is exclusivity, because I'm sure, as many of you guys know, there is that 
pending acquisition for Activision and Blizzard being acquired by Microsoft that's in all kinds of legal tie up right now. Now, out of some new information that came with this, it seems like the PlayStation deal is up not for 2024's COD, but before it. So Treyarch will be the first game that will be, at least for the time being, tied to no exclusivity standards, which is definitely interesting to see. With a report from Charlie Intel stating, a court document from Sony, which was not redacted properly, and has been since deleted by the court, it revealed that PlayStation and the Call of Duty deal expires in 2024, but does not include Call of Duty 2024. Sony's partnership apparently ends with Call of Duty 2023. The last game covered in the contract is a Call of Duty title to be released in late 2023. Now, this in and of itself is pretty great to hear, but we do have to realize what we're on the precipice of here. If it was a standalone thing, if there was no pending Microsoft acquisition, that's good news that we'd see no exclusivity at that point, where that would be expiring after this upcoming Falls project. If it was a standalone statement, it would be great. But with the pending Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard, the pendulum could swing the other way again for the first time in almost a decade instead of finally coming to a rest in the center. So that begs a plenty number of questions. Firstly, will Xbox have exclusive benefits? Will they get early access like PlayStation in recent years? Because this is the potential first time since Advanced Warfare that we've seen Xbox in the driver's seat with licensing rights. And in the past years, we've seen a major shift in what that entails for licensing rights, which could be a silver lining here at this. Betas weren't a thing back in Advanced Warfare whenever we ended up getting the last Xbox exclusive title, but early access for a few days is of course still one that has stayed the course over that nearly decade since Black Ops 3 introduced the PlayStation exclusivity era. But honestly, that's one of the only remaining things from that first iteration. But when Xbox had those deals, things like DLC were a month exclusive. That would not fly in today's market, and honestly, I can't see that being made if they were to gain exclusivity rights and try and push for that kind of stuff again. I'd imagine it's more so similar to the smaller stuff we have now with PlayStation, an extra 24 hours of double XP events, an extra small battle pass bonus of like five tiers for each season bundle, a combat pack exclusive to the platform, and other smaller things alike, but nothing that really locks too much content away. I mean, we've even seen in recent years the PlayStation exclusives of Spec Ops Survival, Onslaught, that kind of stuff that was mode specific content, that stuff no longer exists within Vanguard and Modern Warfare 2. Instead, I think that we'd end up seeing probably the biggest shift though, come of course in Game Pass access. That was confirmed last September that that was the aim to make these readily available for Game Pass users. And that's something that honestly, just more so increases the accessibility to Call of Duty titles at that point, which personally, I don't see too many problems with. Maybe I'm just not reading far enough into it, but access at a low cost price for all Xbox users, yeah, PlayStation doesn't quite get that, of course, but it only opens up the awareness and accessibility of the franchise and the brand. Now, the question, though, comes down to would they end up trying to go Xbox exclusive? And of course, that's all dependent on the ruling for the acquisition going further. But so far, verbally, there's been plenty of commitments to keep Activision games on PlayStation, including today with these recent court filings. So it's something that I'm inclined to think, OK, we're going to see it on PlayStation as well, even if it is acquired by Microsoft. But here's the thing, of course, if you were to ever try and make that counter argument of well, Microsoft could change their mind, Right now, there's actually as best a case for that as compared to any time before. I still don't think that they will, and I think that economically it's not the best move, but with recent information coming out of these current hearings on the acquisition, there could be a compelling case to be made. Standout things like COD's PlayStation revenue was two times that of Xbox's revenue, that there were over 1 million PlayStation players only playing Call of Duty on their console, with 6 million PlayStation players spending 70% of their time playing only Call of Duty, a case potentially for the shift in console sales if exclusive, an estimated 1.5 billion in revenue globally for PlayStation alone, 4.4 million unit sales in the first week of Modern Warfare 2 for PlayStation platforms only, among a many number of things. Again, I truly think that financially it's smarter to own the rights than license it out to your competitors where they have to pay you instead of just taking it away from it, but I mean, if you were ever going to make that counter argument that maybe Microsoft tries to do something shifty, then I absolutely shed some light on that. But again, I don't think it's worth worrying about just yet. But perhaps my biggest question for 2024 is, will this be a two-year game? Because in theory, I love the idea of giving developers a larger window of developmental time, but I think this year has really shown that it's a really risky deal for the player base. I mean, listen, 
I'm jaded by this year for sure, but I'm sure glad that we at least have the potential of something that could be better this upcoming fall, rather than being stuck with what we have with Modern Warfare 2 and the new Warzone iteration for another year and four or five months time. So while sure it has great potential to give life to a project longer than a year, oppositely, it has potential to bury the interest in a project of it if it's not well received, if it's not well upkept, and a number of things. So we'll see how that all shakes up. But I mean, right now we're learning a decent bit about some cool stuff upcoming for even further beyond what is rumored to be Modern Warfare 3. So we'll keep you, of course, up to date with everything you need to know. But right now, exclusivity ending before 2024 is launched. Nice for Treyarch here at that. Leave some questions on the table, though, for the Xbox acquisition pending approval. But with Treyarch's title still being out there, it is interesting we can start to look forward to this with a bit of maybe favor, perhaps, whereas this last couple of months has certainly been a bit more grim in regards to what's upcoming. But anyways, that's what we're going to call it. So before we wrap everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel. Cut Espresso gets you 20% off all items in your order all the time. But for the month of June, things like the tubs of Hype Sauce, Hibiscus Tea, MS Melon, and as well, Starter Kits, those are all 30% off. So if you guys want to try G Fuel for the very first time, Starter Kits, of course, discounted and are a great time to pick one up. If you want to get a restock of one of your favorite tubs, make sure you do so. But check out the link in the description below if you guys are at all interested. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you guys have some hope for 2023, maybe 2024 here? even further with Treyarch's next title. Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay there with all things Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, COD 2024, X Defiant, and other FPS content here upcoming. We got you covered on the channel. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.